This is my vending machine GUI. As you can see, it displays the drinks in the top left, the drink selection in the top right, which has a number pad, which allows the user to input which drink is selected. Below that is the prepaying customer, which allows a prepaying customer to input their login details. And then underneath that is all the coins. If a cash customer were to come to this vending machine, they wanted to buy Coca-Cola, for example. As we can see, Coca-Cola is under one. It costs two pounds and there are five Coca-Colas remaining. So if we were to put two pounds into the vending machine um, and select one, because we are buying the Coca-Cola, and we accept, I come up with a pop-up saying that Coca-Cola has been dispensed. If we were to put, say, three pounds into the vending machine and select the Coca-Cola, the Coca-Cola would be dispensed and we would also get one pound's change. Each of these coins only have five. So say, for example, we put five two pound coins in, which make it 10 pounds. You can see that we no longer have any more two pound coins, allowing me to no longer click two pounds. And then if we buy, let's say, Gatorade for two pounds, for example, Gatorade would be dispensed and we'll get eight pounds change. Now, as you can see, when we was buying these drinks, so we have bought two Coca-Colas, so it's gone down from five to three remaining, and we've bought one Gatorade, so it went down from five to four. If we were to put not enough money into the machine, let's say we wanted to buy a Diet Coke, that's on eight. So we we have put one pound in, however, Diet Coke is one pound 50. If we were to buy that, it would pop up saying insufficient funds. If we were to put in the wrong code, so we, so we wanted to buy a Coca-Cola, but we accidentally put in a 17, which does not exist. It would say the input drink um, is invalid. If we were to put money into the machine and then select a drink, but we changed our minds before we accepted the drink, everything would be reset and giving us the coins back. If a prepaying customer were to log in, say user 1001, uh, we sign in and a 10% discount is applied. And when this 10% discount is applied, all the prices of all the drinks are then changed and we are no longer able to put in the coins. And it also displays that the login was successful. This user has a balance of 50 pounds. If we were to buy a drink, let's say an iced tea, that's drink six, it would do the same as the coins. So it would dispense the drink and then it would take however much the drink cost from the user's account. So if we logged back in to user 1001, <clears throat> we no longer have 50 pounds. We now have 47 pounds 30. Again, if we were to buy another drink, Coca-Cola, for example, we would dispense the Coca-Cola, taking the drink down and taking that money away from user 1001. If we were to continuously buy Coca-Cola to the point where it got to no Coca-Colas left, the machine would say that the drink is no longer available, meaning that um, it is waiting for a maintenance to restock it and it would give the change back. So this is the code for the vending machine. As you can see, we've got a, a vending machine class, which is the main class. We've got the vending machine GUI, which has all the GUI components. We've got a drinks class, 
we've got a money class, and we've got a customer class. So what the vending machine class does is it opens up the GUI in the center of the screen and sets it to visible. Moving on to the vending machine GUI class, we have got all these attributes and we have got the select drinks method. We've got a drinks method, we've got a reset method, and we've got a check account method. Now the select drinks method um, allows the user to select the drink. If we open this up, you can see, so let's take this block, for example. So it calls drinks and takes the first line in the drink. So if we look in the drinks text file, the first drinks is Coca-Cola. It has an amount five and it costs 200. If the amount is zero, it displays that the drink is not available and it gives you the change. If the drink is available, then it executes this. So what this does is if a customer is not logged in, it will execute this, which is the cash payment system. If a customer is logged in, it will execute the prepaid customer statement. So this is the drinks method. As you can see, it's it takes all the drinks from each from each line, as we saw in the text file. It then sets the drinks into the J levels in the GUI. So as you can see, this is the design. So drink one is set to the first drink in the text file. Same with the amount and same with the price. This does it for all 15 drinks. This statement is if the if a customer is logged in, then it will add it will set the 10% discount to all the drinks and update the price. So the reset method resets the vending machine. It sets all the coins back to being enabled. It sets all the coins back to having five and it sets everything back to its default. The check account method checks if the account exists. It does that by taking the input, checking if that user exists in the customer text file. Then if it does exist, then it sets the J label to login successful. It shows the account number and the account balance. It makes it so the money pane is no longer able to use. It then sets C to one, meaning that a customer is in use. It then calls the drinks method, setting all the drinks to a 10% discount. And then it pops up saying that a 10% discount has been applied. If the user does not exist, the, the J label will display account not found. If there are more than zero coins when the button is pressed, then the amount of coins go down. When the coin hits zero, then it displays empty in the J label, as well as disabling the button. In order to further understand how these buttons work, it calls dot add two pounds method from the money class. In the money class, we have got the sum attribute. When the application is run, sum is set to zero. When one of the buttons is called, such as two pounds, it calls dot add two pounds, which then adds 2.0 to the sum. The get sum formatted method formats the sum so that it displays two pounds instead of 2.0. The drinks class has three attributes. 
name, amount, and price, each of which have getters and setters. The drinks class also has a reads drinks method, which reads the drinks file found here. and puts them into a list, which is then called by the vending machine GUI. The customer class has two attributes, account number and account balance, each of which has getters and setters. The customer class also has a read from file method, the same as what the drinks class has. It reads the customers from the file as found in the customer.txt file and puts them in an array, splitting them by the comma.